not not a, writing the part you wrote second and not assu not assuming your readers knew the part that you had, knew you had written. It was a challenge, you know. Um, but as a writer, it's the kind of challenge you kind of hope someone's going to give you. Um, I don't know that I'll ever have a chance to write a book quite like this again. What happened was that I actually wrote Evelyn's Side first, um, but while I was writing Evelyn's Side, I had to keep thinking about what was going to happen on Brendan's Side. And then when I wrote Brendan's Side, what I did was I had a typing stand, and I actually put Evelyn's Side right there on the typing stand while I was typing, and I was reading Brendan's Side, quite literally, as I was typing Evelyn's. And then I had to go back because things had happened in Brendan's side that, that needed to also happen in Evelyn's. So I had to revise Evelyn's side to match Brendan's, and then I had to do the whole thing over again. So it was, it was this really interesting revision process, writing process and revision process, not quite like anything I've done before. But, but it was fascinating, and it was a terrific challenge. For what it's worth, it comes out very romantic. Thank you. I'm glad you think so. Anyone else? Any questions about, yeah. Uh, did you consider how much to change the, um, not only the kind of internal monologue, but the, the actual events? Because, I mean, I know just my profession as a lawyer, I know two people never remember the same events or conversation the same way. I used to be a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly, that's exactly it, right? Uh, and if you see the story, you'll find that the same general events happen on each side, but they mean different things to each person, and they each remember different bits of it. So it's not, the conversations aren't, it's not that they're different, but it's that the emphasis is different, and you might find that there are words missing in one conversation that are there in another conversation, because one person, from one person's perspective, they were important, and from another person's perspective, they weren't. So I was thinking very much of something like um, witness testimony, in a trial, because witnesses, you're right, they remember things differently. Different people remember things differently. Were the versions different this time? It sounded well, very similar. It, it's interesting because, you know, I think it, it's somewhat revealing about, you know, the, your commitment to the idea of an objective truth, because what's in between the quotation marks is the same on both sides. The dialogue is the same on both sides. It's everything around the dialogue that isn't. Well, even the physical events like climbing the hill. Yes. And there are a couple of little tiny like omissions at the beginnings or the ends. Like the gist of yeah. the dialogue, where the dialogue matches, it's exactly the same. But Notice that she remembers how hard it is to climb the hill. He remembers holding her hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're, but they're focusing on different things. Yeah. And that's part of, you know, it's, the funny thing is that when you're writing something like this, when you're writing anything as a writer, um, there are a lot of things you're not really conscious of. And what you do is you, you think, I'm Evelyn, what am I seeing? That's literally what you're doing. And then you think, now today I'm Brendan, what am I seeing and what is important to me? So you're not going, oh, it would be more important to her too. You're not thinking about it logically. You're just thinking, what does this scene look like from the perspective of this particular girl? Yeah. Anyone else? Any questions that about it? Yeah, the no question, there. actually. So could you, um, were you able to write in both their voices during the same writing period? Or is it would you have to write Evelyn and then if you were gonna write Brendan you'd have to get up and walk around or <laughs> and then you know reset before coming back? That's an excellent and very interesting question. Um, I and I've never even really thought about it before, but I think you're right. There was I wrote Evelyn's story, there were at least a couple of weeks between writing Evelyn's story and writing Brendan's story initially. And then when I went back and forth, you're right, I never worked. I never flipped back and forth. I only ever worked on one story at the same time. And I think it's because there's a sense in which I had to become, I had to be each character. And if you're a writer, those of you who are writers know that you've got to, you've got to be there and you need to be the character and you need to write from the perspective of the character. Even if the, the character is a third person narrator, in that case you have to be the third person narrator but you're always, you're never quite writing as yourself. You're always writing as something else. Yeah, yeah. Why did you choose to keep the two narratives separate rather than interleaving them? Um, well, it had to do with the format of the book. And the, the format, I have to give all the credit to Stephen for, because when um, this 
project started, what happened from my perspective, it happened for, it started for Stephen way before it started for me, because he had the idea. And then he gave me a call and he said, I have this idea to create a book that opens like an accordion. And you know, the book is a little delicate, but you can see that if I open it up, it literally opens like an accordion. And he said, I want it to be two-sided. Uh, there's a, there's a, someone has called this an adult choose your own adventure, and it's not quite that, but it's interesting. At the beginning, <coughs> you read the book, you have to choose whether you're going to start with Evelyn's perspective or Brendan's perspective, mm -hmm. and there are different reading experiences, and you can't go back and recreate the reading experience without, you, you can't go back to that moment before reading the book that, that you made that choice. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a funny read. The, I, as the read, I, as the writer, am not controlling which way you're reading the book. I have less control over it than I would normally as a writer. And coming to the project, you know, sort of at the very beginning, just in terms of what it was, the, the original idea was, you know, this is a cool format that usually people use for artistic reasons. You know, they pull out an accordion full of books so you can see panoramic, you know, images and paintings and portfolios in a way that a regular book can't let you do. Excuse me. And the realization we had talking about the format was, you know, it's good for another trick. It's also good for a literary trick, which is you can literally make a double book in a much more elegant and aesthetically pleasing way than just having a flip it over kind of <coughs> double book. Um, you know, the, the two stories literally go through each other invisibly to one another. And, you know, once we realized that, you know, the question was, well, what do you do with that to justify making a book like that? And you know, so we asked the question, well, it, it should either be a love story, because every love story has two different perspectives, or maybe it should be a murder mystery, because there's two perspectives <laughs> coming into that kind of story, too. We went with a love story. <laughs> and you know the biggest challenge? But I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you about this. Uh, I'll tell you the challenge. The biggest challenge was how to end each story. Because when you get to the end, you have to write it so that the person reading it wants to flip it over and find out what happens in the other story. Um, so each story has to have an arc, but the arc can't quite end. But I'm not going to tell you anything about the ending. You have to read it. Was it very difficult to contract with a printer to produce a book like this? Yes, we, we the production manager researched a lot of different printers and spent like it took a long time to get approval for the project because before we could say yes, we're going to do this, we had to make sure that someone could print it in, a, in an affordable fashion. You know, knowing what this book would be, we wanted it to be. The sort of thing that a book lover would give to another book lover for Valentine's Day or for some sort of gift, and we wanted it to be attractive. So it's it's only a, a sixteen dollar book, is that right? Not sixteen ninety five. Um, and discount at various places. You can get it for under twelve bucks, which is pretty good. <laughs> so it, it, it you know it needed to be that kind of impulsive. Oh my God, that's wonderful! I need to buy that for so and so. But also, it's so beautiful. You know, it's been a long time since I've seen a book that pretty. Um, so yes, it, it, it was a long time finding the right printer who could do it, and we did, and then we did it. So, 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 One more question. So, so what are you going to do with the e version? Yeah. <laughs> That's an excellent question. <laughs> Maybe you can turn your Kindle. Thank you everyone so much for coming. Thank you.